Welcome back to the channel. This is Alex Howell. And today what I want to talk about has to do with something that happened to me yesterday. Now, I went and looked at a property. It's a small house, less than 800 square feet, two bed, one bath, in a suburb of Kansas City called Belton, Missouri. This place has a nice lot. And even though it's kind of in a, I won't call it a transitional neighborhood, um, it's just kind of in a, um, we'll say lower middle class, kind of working blue collar neighborhood, no HOA. So some houses look amazing, some not so much. But a lot of people have taken the non-HOA part of that, which they like, and kind of built them up. And this house is no exception. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. The rent is really low right now, but with eight less than 800 square feet, there's a lot of room to improve and improve really well, get that rent up, and have a nice lot for somebody to rent for a while. Or if there's a possibility of it, there, we can always flip the property. Now, I went in, and there's significant work to be done, and I was actually able to speak with a tenant, which is always a blessing in disguise. This tenant was paying rent on time. I had that on paper and they were able to tell me, thankfully, a lot of the issues that were going on. And it was absolutely frustrating for me to hear that a landlord wasn't taking care of the tenant the way that needed to be taken care of. Now, some landlords like myself might scoff at that a little bit, but the fact of the matter is the toilet was sinking into the subfloor. The bedrooms were just an absolute wreck. The carpet was shredded. Now, some of this may have been the tenant's issue, but at the same time, there are things you can do to make sure that this is a better looking property. So today what I want to talk about are five tips for property managers getting off the ground. So this is whether you're a rookie or a seasoned vet just trying to relearn a lot of the things that you knew in the past. Take a look at this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and also like and subscribe to the channel because that's the way for the algorithm to change. Uh, hopefully have more people see this video and get the information as well. So if you don't mind, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, enjoy the video. All right, so step one is really simple. When you're going, when you're initiating the, uh, the process of trying to get a renter in, the first thing that I would absolutely suggest that you do is make sure that you go to Craigslist, you go to Facebook Marketplace, you put a sign in the yard, you do everything that you possibly can. Go to rent.com, Zillow has a rental feature now as well. Go to those sites and list your property. And the reason for this is the more people that you get in as potential renters and the more people that you have to choose from, you can start really kind of funneling down exactly who you want to be a tenant of this property. So you could do things like background checks, credit checks. Now there are some cities that have some tenant laws that make this a little bit more difficult, but for the most part, you can do those things to figure out who's paid their rent on time, who pays their bills on time, who's kind of the type of person that you actually want to rent to and move forward from there. Now I can tell you as well that some people don't have the best credit score. One of my best tenants that was in a property for five years, paid early or on time, never missed a payment, never had a single issue and left the property in great condition. It was right after the recession and they had gone through a bankruptcy. They had the money, they paid everything that they could, but for about six months, this woman lost her job. They were highly leveraged. The guy's salary could not pay for all of their bills. They were overextended and they kind of got humbled a little bit and had to rent from me for a bit. Now that's unfortunate, but they were able to kind of get their life back together. And then eventually they, like I said, they rented for me for five years. They eventually bought a house and we were good to go. But for a while, they had to show that they made that mistake. They were fantastic renters. So go through all those processes, but also, and this is important as well, interview everybody that you can. If you have some tenants that you think, well, this looks a little bad on the report, but you see that they've got really good jobs, maybe they've got something in their history that can explain it. Interview everybody, get a ton of people that are potential renters, and make sure that you drive down to the 10 people, the five people, the three people, and then to the one person that you want to rent to. And also make sure that you have a backup just in case life happens and they have to move away for a job or whatever it might be. So get as many people as you can from all of those sources, funnel it down and figure out exactly who it is you want to rent to and start renting. Step number two is this. And I see this a lot with people is that they really try, I should say, I see this a lot with landlords. They really try to get this property in Decent shape for pictures, but really the underlying stuff, which is the stuff that you need to be worried about, gets deferred a little bit. That's deferred maintenance that we talk about. Things that you probably should be keeping up on that you're simply not. So the first thing I would tell the landlord once they found that tenant and as even as they're getting to the process where, or getting into the process where they're finding the right tenant is make sure that you're doing everything you can to fix the things that you can see and you can't see. Now, if it needs new carpet, a coat of paint, stuff like that, obviously take care of those things as well. But have this 
uh, HVAC service, okay? Make sure that you have, you know, the filter replaced, check all the plumbing lines. Sometimes if you've had a property that's maybe a little bit older, has clay piping for the sewage line, if you've had a client in there or a tenant in there for two, three, five years, maybe pay the couple hundred bucks it's going to take to get that thing scoped, run through, and all of that water running perfectly to the city line because that's going to save you in the long run. All of these things do a couple of things. One, it makes you feel good that you're giving the tenant a property that is well maintained. Two, you now know exactly where this place started. So if the tenant does complain to you and say something's not happening, you have a record to show, hey, I did everything right to make sure that this place was good to go. And number three, this is a huge investment. Make sure you're taking care of your investment because it's not just the rental dollars that are coming in. It's the fact that this is a normally hundred plus thousand dollar investment that you're going to hold on to for a very long time. This helps you save money in the long term by spending a little bit of money up front. All of these systems are yours, even though somebody else is utilizing them. Make sure they're in as good a shape as possible so that when you have somebody else using them, they're in good shape, they're strong, and they're ready to go. Okay, communication is key. That's step number three. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Hey, communication is three. That is a really good step number three because communication is one of those things that I preach to every single tenant that I have in. Now, that doesn't mean that every single tenant has been perfect. That doesn't mean that I've been perfect at this. But really what I try to push is that communication, talking back and forth, is without question the number one priority, Paris for rooms. But make sure that you communicate. If you're having people come through, whether it's somebody to do the maintenance that's normally done through the year. I have personally have a heating and cooling guy that comes in spring and fall to make sure that everything's gone through, that everything's clean, that everything looks right, finds the issues, takes care of them if there are any. But for the most part, it's somebody that has to come in there to maintain those systems. I try to give at least a week's notice before those appointments because normally it's something that either I make sure is happening or in a really positive scenario, if you trust your tenant and you have a good HVAC guy that's gonna communicate this with you, just have them figure out the timing. Have the HVAC guy go in, maintain everything, check it out. They know, the tenant knows that you're taking care of their property. You know that your property is being taken care of by them and by you. So communicate those times. Also, if something goes wrong, if there's a small water leak, if a toilet's not flushing, if the dishwasher doesn't seem to be running properly, even if it's making a noise that just sounds like you might want to stop by the property and check it out, make sure that your tenant understands that's 100% okay. I tell every single person that rents from me, please send me a message, whether it's text, email, or give me a phone call. If something just doesn't seem right about the property, we all know as landlords that there are going to be a couple of people that are maybe a little bit more high maintenance than others. But for the most part, I would personally rather take a phone call every couple of days from a tenant that's high maintenance than have an issue go without fixing for a long period of time that's just going to cost me money and the tenant a headache and also and also me a headache. But if I'm able to find that out ahead of time, win-win. I can fix the issue before it becomes a major problem and the tenant doesn't have to live with that issue. Communicate those small issues and this also has to do with rent, which to me is one of the biggest issues. If a tenant is going to be late on rent, which does happen from time to time, I think we all know that life happens. If I have a good tenant that's 12 months hitting rent perfectly on time, no issues whatsoever, and they send me a message and say, hey, I know it's written into our contract, but I'm going to be late this month. I can give you, let's say it's $1,000 a month in rent just to make it an easy number. I can give you $700 now, but if you can give me till my next paycheck the following week to get you the other $300, can we work something out? If that's the case, normally what I do is I communicate in writing exactly what's gonna happen. I email them and I ask them, respond to this email so that I can show that you confirmed, okay? Just make sure they have it. That could be text message too, screenshot it, save it to a file on your computer. Make sure that it's communicated properly and that you have it saved somewhere so that you can always find it if, ever, if there ever arises an issue. Once they say yes, I'll be honest with you, I know some people will agree with this, but if I've got a good tenant, I would rather them pay me the $300 the following week, maybe establish a late fee if necessary, especially if it's a couple of weeks, but establish that, keep them in, and just know between both parties that this is not gonna be a regular thing. But if you've been 
on time, maintaining the property and a great tenant, every once in a while, life's going to happen. I'm willing to work with you. I think that is going to be huge. And again, this is all in that huge step number three, communication. Communicate your priorities. Make sure they are allowed to communicate to you with you having open ears and you're going to have a good relationship. Step number four has a lot to do with step number three, and that is be kind but strict. Now, this sounds just like step number three on the last end because I probably went a little bit too far in, but being kind and strict is something that I think can work both ways. I've personally been yelled at for tenants for an issue that was absolutely my fault. I've had to get into it with tenants for an issue that was their fault. And there's also times where it seems like it's one person's fault to the other, and a lot of times it's not even anybody's fault. It's just something that happens. There are a thousand different scenarios that are come into play because you are owning the asset that somebody is living in, okay? So along with communication, make sure you're strict. Remember in step number three where I said you have to establish that this isn't a regular thing? That's absolutely true. You can have a great line of communication. You can have a great relationship with your tenant, and the tenant can have a great relationship with their landlord. But you also have to make sure that the expectation is set very, very high because you don't want it to be low. So if a tenant t tells you because you were an hour late for an appointment that that can't happen again, you have to personally look inside yourself and say, they're absolutely right. That can't happen again. I owe them the same respect that I expect back from them. And on the same token, if a tenant doesn't allow an HVAC guy in because they just decided to go out, if they're treating the place like crap, or if they're simply trying to get away with not paying rent on time every single month or every other month in a way that is detrimental, especially to you as a business owner, because that's really what this is, then that expectation needs to be set immediately in concrete, in stone, and it cannot change. You have to be kind and strict with tenants and they with you to make sure that that relationship is strong, but also maintained as a business relationship. I think it's a really important step. I hope you agree. Step number five is the ongoing. Maintain, hold accountable, and respect. You have to respect that this is the property that they are living in. Yes, you absolutely own it. I'm 100% on your side on that. This is your baby. This is your investment. This is something that you will invest lots and lots of money in over a period of years, whether that's a couple of years, a couple of decades, or a lifetime. This is going to be an asset that you hold on to that is yours. But they also are renting. They're paying you for access to this property, and you agreed to that. So make sure that you respect the fact that they don't need somebody there every other day. I hear tenant or people who are looking to be property managers tell me constantly, like if it was me and they were 24 hours late on the rent, then I'd show up with a shotgun and I'd park myself on their couch. First of all, no, you're not going to do that because one, it's illegal. And second, I like, I'm pro second amendment. Don't show up to somebody's house with a gun and expect good things to happen. All right. But really, honestly, make sure that you respect them. They're taking care of your house. Don't treat them like a child. Don't treat them like a terrible tenant. Give them the expectation that they are fantastic. And then if they prove otherwise, deal with it at that point. But make sure that you respect them. Now, you do have to hold accountable, and you have to maintain this relationship. This isn't something that you could just collect a paycheck and never pay attention to. This, is at, this, isn't, a, this isn't a passive investment like some people like to pretend it is. This is an active investment in your future. So make sure that you maintain it. Make sure that if it's a month or every other month, they are hearing from you in some way, shape, or form. Whether that's, hey, everything going great, fantastic, that's all I needed, have a good day. Send them a text, how's everything going? If they say fantastic, great. Email, same thing. Doesn't matter how you do it. Maintain the relationship, maintain the focus on the property. That's the thing that holds the two of you together. So make sure you're utilizing that. And again, hold accountable. They should do that for you, you should do that for them. This is your investment property but it's their home. Make sure everybody's respectful. Accountability will come with that. Guys, I hope that was a quick video and I also hope that these steps were uh, helpful to you. I know that it's always been helpful to me to make sure that once I establish the relationship at the very, very beginning, we are good to go going forward. To me, it's a much more positive thing than trying to rework a relationship once something has been hurt, especially in property management. Again, like I've said this entire time, I'm sure you're sick of hearing about it, but this is their home. This is where they're living. This is your investment. Make sure all parties know that and all parties respect that. And most of the time, knock on wood, ooh, jiggle the camera, you're going to have a good relationship. If not, deal with it at that point and go through the processes that we'll outline in other videos through eviction and things like that 
But right now, make sure you're doing everything that you possibly can to have a respectful relationship and an ongoing relationship, a positive one. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me at Alexander from KC on the various social media accounts that you may enjoy or on LinkedIn, linkedin.com slash Alexander Howell. Also, send me a text message. My text line is 816-529-2195 or send me an email at alexander at alexanderhowell.com. That's the web address as well, alexanderhowell.com. Have a great day. Hope you enjoy. Go find a rental property. Get out of here. What are you doing watching YouTube videos?